I need like a teleprompter. Ugh. Pass keys really started taking off since Apple and Google announced native support for them in iOS and Android. They've been in the news again recently because Google just announced that you can now log into your Google account without a password at all using this new passkey technology. I wanted to take a look at how they work, whether they're better than passwords, and whether they're actually as private as Google claims. Passkeys are not some proprietary new authentication technology that Google and Apple have been secretly cooking up. They're actually a W3C web standard. The new name for a not so new technology called Discoverable Web Often FIDO Credentials. YubiKey has actually supported the technology behind Passkey in their YubiKey 5 series since 2018. Because this standard has been around for quite some time, we actually already know a lot about how it works already. Passkeys operate with public key cryptography, the same type of encryption used to secure websites that you visit with HTTPS or emails that you might send with PGP. When you add a passkey to an online account, your device, whether that be a phone or a YubiKey, generates two keys, a public key and a private key. The public key gets sent to the online account that you're registering with, and the private key never leaves your device. This means that unlike passwords or two-factor authentication codes, there is no shared secret being sent from your device to the server that you're registering with. One benefit of this is that the server doesn't need to protect the public key that it sends it, which can mitigate damage in the event of a data breach. All of this makes passkeys very strong and very easy to use. There's nothing to remember, you just log in with the device you already have. Let's go over the good things about passkeys. Maybe you already follow best practices. You have a password manager, you use long random passwords for every service that you use. There's another benefit to passkeys, which is possibly even greater, which is its phishing protection. We know that passwords and 2FA codes can be easily phished by an attacker with a fake login page. Passkeys work fundamentally different. They can only be used on the same domain name that the key was originally registered with. Even if they gave you a fake login page and a QR code to scan with your phone, it wouldn't work. There's also no way to extract that secret key from your phone, so there's no way that you could be tricked into giving your passkey away. Another great feature of passkeys is that they were built with privacy in mind. I've seen some concerns online that passkeys might be used to track you between the various websites that you register with. This simply isn't true. When you register for a website with a passkey, your device generates that public and private key. When you go on to register with a second website, your device generates a brand new public and private key set just for that website. This means that the public key that the first website has is completely different from the public key that the second key has, and there's no identifying information in those keys that could be used to tie you as a user together if those two websites decided to collaborate to track you. Another thing that I've seen a lot of is passkey's use of biometrics. Usually when you create or use a passkey on your phone, it asks you for a fingerprint, and some people are concerned that biometric information might be collected by the websites that you're registering with. This isn't true either. The biometric information that passkeys use is the same as you might use on your lock screen, for example. It's information that only stays on your device. When you try to use a passkey on your phone with a website, it asks for a fingerprint, and your phone confirms whether the fingerprint is correct, and, uh, and if it is, it unlocks the secret key. All of that information, besides the simple yes or no, is never transmitted from your phone to the server, so you don't have to worry about your biometrics at all. They are not at risk, and they do not leave your device. If you're still worried about biometrics, they are optional. You can also use your phone's lock screen password. But again, all of that information is only used to unlock the secret key on your device. It's never sent to the remote web server. Right now, at the time that I'm recording this, the biggest problem with passkeys is compatibility. Passkey support is noticeably missing from Firefox and Linux, even if you use Chrome on Linux. And even Google's new passwordless logins are not compatible with their own Chrome OS. It will likely take months or possibly even longer for passkeys to be really well supported by all operating systems and browsers. We know that Firefox is working on it already, for example, and it's more than likely that that will come sooner rather than later, but it is going to take some time. So you should definitely make sure all of the platforms that you use 
support pass keys before you go all in. Another concern that I have at the moment with pass keys is vendor lock-in. Right now, the pass key ecosystem is relatively immature, where they're saved to Google passwords or iCloud keychain. To me, this is just another way that these tech companies are keeping you locked into their ecosystem. It'll be that much harder to switch platforms should the need arise. I'm not saying that iCloud keychain or Google passwords are insecure by any means. However, data portability is still a really big privacy concern, and you should always have the option to pack up and leave if a platform isn't respecting the privacy. The good news is that third-party support is coming, it's just not here quite yet. I know that 1Password is currently working on passkey support right now, and they plan on launching it in early June and Bitwarden and KeePass are both developing support for it as well. Now let's talk about security. While the technology behind passkeys is the same, it's a standard, there is still a huge difference in security between a passkey on your phone and a passkey on a YubiKey. The passkeys on your phone are copyable. This means that they can be saved to your phone's keychain and they can be synced to a cloud backup and to other devices that you own, which is great if you lose your phone, for example, or you break it and you need to get a new one. However, that does reduce your security to the security of your cloud sync provider. And it is theoretically possible for a remote attacker, maybe halfway across the world, to get into your Google or Apple account and possibly gain access to your passkeys. Passkeys on a YubiKey, on the other hand, not a sponsor by the way, I just like them, are non-copyable. They're bound to the hardware of this key and they can't be backed up. Definitely a double-edged sword. It means that you have to have at least two Yubi keys. So you have one you can carry with you and one that you keep for a backup. However, it does reduce your attack surface significantly because it means that you have to be in physical possession of this key in order to get onto your accounts. There's no possible way around it. Pass keys in your Google or Apple account are still secure. And for most people, you don't have to worry about this. They're encrypted with your account credentials and an encryption passphrase. But if you are looking for the highest possible security for your accounts, YubiKeys or similar FIDO2 compatible hardware keys are still going to be the gold standard for securing your accounts with passkeys. Right now, I think the problem with vendor lock-in is a big enough problem to discourage people from going all in on them right now. However, when your favorite password manager platform supports passkeys, I would absolutely suggest switching to them. The benefits over passwords are significant and privacy is not a concern. I definitely think that they are the future of authentication and you should definitely check them out when third-party platforms are ready. If you like this video, maybe you learned something, why don't you get subscribed, and I will see you in the next one.